Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Fancy Schmancy Wino. I'm James, not Jimmy, that's my brother. We're two guys with the same name, drinking the same wines, and sharing our thoughts with folks just like you. Last week we shared a couple of different Sauvignon Blancs, uh, one that uh, my brother thought was a nationwide wine, uh, Grey Rock, and one that uh, I have no idea if it's a nationwide wine, uh, Monkey Bay. Uh, a couple of great white wines, crisp, good examples of New Zealand Sauvignon Blancs. This week we wanted to get back to the reds. Uh, specifically, we wanted to try some Merlots. Now we picked one that, while available nationwide, you should be able to get at your grocery store or uh, any fine wine store. It comes right out of the backyard of Jimmy, my brother, uh, specifically from sh the folks at Chateau St. Michel. Um, many of us are familiar with them. We're familiar with their Rieslings, some of the, some of the best Rieslings in the U.S. And I think they're the largest uh, provider of Rieslings in the U.S. But they have a, a wide range of wines available and uh, varietals to, to taste. And so we thought we'd go with one of their Merlots. Uh, specifically, we went with the uh, Indian Wells Merlot. Uh, this comes from Eastern Washington, their Indian Wells Vineyards. And uh, if, you, if you look it up, if you do some research, you'll know that while it's a Merlot, it's a more than 75% Merlot, uh, it also includes Syrah, which uh, they would say brings into it some, uh, some of the full-bodiedness and maybe some of the fruity flavors. And so just thought it'd be a great way to, to start this episode, jumping into a nice, dark, rich red wine. So if you're drinking it with us, let's go ahead and, and get in there and, and pour this wine and see what it looks like. Okay, yeah, I mean, pretty much what you'd expect. A nice, uh, nice ruby, maybe a dark garnet. It's definitely not as rich as, uh, in, in color or as inky as some of the uh, Petite Syrahs, or if you remember a few weeks back when we looked at Gnarly Head's uh, Authentic Black. Definitely not that dark, but still rich ruby, um, pretty color. You're not going to see through it. Yeah, I mean, it, it's very representative of what you'd expect from a nice Merlot. So uh, if you're drinking it with us, if you're trying it with us, we get in there and smell it next. Mmm. Yeah, um, I think you've got that berry smell that you just expect from, uh, well, from many red wines, uh, period, but uh, certainly from a Merlot. Uh, as I'm looking at it, you know, seeing the, the legs in the glass, but uh, as it's getting in my nose, I'm getting a uh, berry, uh, vanilla, yeah, uh, may maybe a hint of cinnamon. It it's a nice smell. I, mean, I think you're getting the effects of that oak. Um, maybe a little, uh, some might say uh, some a toasty vanilla. Mmm. Yeah, that's just, I mean, it's a nice smelling. Uh, the fruit's there, but it's not overwhelming. You're not, uh, not going to think you're drinking a, a fruit juice here. But uh, on the same hand, it's not uh, so over-oaked that it's overcoming the berry smell. Yeah, that's nice. Um, it doesn't have as much alcohol as you uh, would find in some of the cabs and zins, uh, but it's still a good 14%. And so um, it's high compared to a lot of you know, old world wines. And yet I'm not getting any heat off it. Uh, the alcohol smell's not overwhelming. Yeah, that, for, for me, I like that. I'm not, I'm not a huge fan when that, that alcohol smell just punches you in the face, so that's nice. Well, let's go ahead and, uh, let's go ahead and try it. Cheers. Mmm. Yeah. Wow. I mean... Right away, you, you get the berry. Certainly, it's got that fruit forward. Um, maybe, maybe a little jammy there. Uh, I didn't get as much vanilla as I, I was expecting maybe to get. Maybe more, uh, more coffee or, or, or mocha than vanilla. Um, you know, both great, great flavors to get off of there. Um, I, I, Again, I love that it's fruit forward. I love that you get those berries there, but I like that finish. The tannins are definitely there. I mean, they're not suck your face off there. Um, if you're not a huge fan of cabs, it's, it's not gonna get you quite like that. Um, but they're there. I think they're gonna, they're gonna provide a nice long finish to this. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, you're, you're getting the alcohol on the way down. It's certainly, um, sometimes, you, know, you might think of a, a little bit of spice, but I think I'm getting it more here, so it's that alcohol as, as it's going down. But your berry, your, your chocolate, maybe a mocha or, or coffee flavored, um, certainly jammy, but the tannins are giving it a nice long finish. You have some, some wines you drink, it's, it's there, it's gone, it's, it's immediately out of your mouth. And this one is there, it's, it's, uh, it's enjoyable. It's a longer lasting taste. Yeah, I mean here, uh, where we are, Indiana, Michigan area, we're getting close to dinner time here. And I'm thinking uh, certainly a nice steak, nice uh, piece of beef. Um, but you know, it might be fun to try this with some pasta, maybe a red sauce. I mean, I know many of you would like a, a Chianti, uh, but I think this, this might go well too. And so it'd be fun to experiment with, uh, with where this one would fit in. But if you're looking for a nice red wine to have with some steak tonight, uh, certainly you, you can't go wrong with uh, Chateau St. Michel's Indian Wells Merlot. Um, I'd recommend it. We talked last week, and the, well, the last couple weeks about how we grade wines. And I'm thinking a, a high B, uh, probably, um, yeah, a B plus would be a fair grade for this wine. It's great tasting, easy to drink, smooth. There's kind of a, a maybe that velvety you sometimes hear about. I, I don't ever eat velvet, but um, just very easy going down. So, and then you balance that with the fact that you can find this most anywhere for under $15. It's a great deal. When you get a great Merlot, easy to drink, tastes great, long finish, less than 15 bucks, that's worthwhile. So uh, I look forward to seeing how my brother rates it. Um, again, very similar tastes, but uh, no idea where he's going to go with it. And planning ahead, in case you want to taste with us, we thought, you know, let, let's keep this Merlot thing going, but, but let's have some fun with it. And so if you're out in the store and get a chance, uh, pick up a bottle of Mad Housewife Merlot, and uh, we'll try that in a couple weeks. So for Fancy Schmancy Wino, I'm James. Cheers. Hey there, it's Jimmy with Fancy Schmancy Wino. That's Jimmy, not James. James is off, oh, probably flossing or ironing his socks. Something kind of, kind of old. Us young folks here are, uh, we're going to drink some wine today. Specifically, as you know, the 2012 Chateau Saint Michel uh, Indian Wells Merlot. Now. Chateau Saint Michel, uh, the wine comes from the uh, Columbia Valley, which is on the eastern side of our state of Washington here. But you can actually pick this up right down the road for me. About 15 minutes north of here is Woodenville, Washington, and Chateau Saint Michel. Excuse me, Chateau Saint Michel has a venue and a tasting room there. Uh, we did a little wine tour there, and it was kind of fun. Anyway, uh, without further ado, let's drink wine. Yes, it's open. Sue me. Yes, I cling the glass with the bottle almost every time because I have zero pouring skills. I don't think I have a shot at being a sommelier anytime soon. As for this wine, we're going to go ahead and call this, I don't know, maybe purplish ruby. I guess purplish ruby. Yeah, take a swift, take a sniff here. That's nice, kind of fruity. Red fruits. Apparently my cat is going to come into the video here. Come on in, Thomas. Hey buddy, glass of wine. Take the edge of the catnip right off of you. Anyway, the wine. Kind of fruity, kind of jammy. A little bit of a sweet spice to it, a little bit. Let's take a drink. Yeah, very fruitful, very punchy. Uh, so jammy, but still dry. A uh, little hint, little hint of earth. Um, try that again. I got ripe. Like black cherry, like black cherry and ripe raspberries. It's a little 
little something else in there too. It's uh, maybe the sweet spice. I couldn't really place my finger on what it actually is, but there might be a little bit of, a little bit of tobacco even. Not bad, it's good tobacco. Um, not super complex, I wouldn't say though. Medium tannins, maybe medium plus little. Pretty smooth though, pretty silky for a Merlot. Not that you would expect anything else from a Merlot, but it's good. I would normally throw in a joke about Merlot, but I don't have any, so. Uh, yeah, I like it. I think I paid $13 for this wine. Not too bad, if, in my opinion. I mean, that's pretty reasonable. I think if I paid up to 20 bucks on this, I'd be happy. Maybe even more. I don't know. It depends on how many of these I've had before I made that decision. But I'm going to go ahead and give it a, let's say a B plus. Yeah, I'm going to go with the B plus. I would drink it again. Going to drink this some more. Um, I think if I was going to pair it with something, hmm, you know what? I actually, I don't know if it'd be good or not, but I'm going to try it with a pork chop, I think. Like a rich, you want something rich with it, but yeah, I'm, I'm gonna try it with a pork chop. I don't know if that's the right pairing, but that's what I'm gonna do. Anyway, I'll see you again next week where we're gonna try another Merlot, as you know, the Mad Housewife. That's not the person who pours it for me, that's actually what it's called. Uh, until then, cheers.